It's June uh, 17th, 2020 now, and back four and a half months ago, I learned at my annual doctor's visit that I had a detached retina. And that day I went to the um, optometrist and one of the things we did was a simple test where the assistant said, look at my nose, but I'm going to hold up fingers at different locations and I want you to tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. So she holds up two in the upper right hand corner and I look at her nose and I say two and then she goes to the lower right corner and I say one and she goes to the lower left corner and I say one but then she goes to the upper left corner above my nose and I say two and she says no look at my nose how many fingers am I holding up but look at my nose and I said I can't see your hand and she said that's the problem and that was an indication that I had a detached retina and also that that meant that the underside of my eye the underside of my eyeball is where the retina had detached so the bottom of your eye sees what's above you and the top of your eye sees what's below you um, so uh, that's how we knew that it was, uh, she saved that corner for last because she thought that would be the problem corner uh, from another test, uh, another electronic test that we had done. Um, so that was interesting to me. I had pretty good vision though in the center of my vision and I could see the other three corners. Um, and that day she said this is serious um even though you, you know you have it feels to you like you have pretty good vision and you and you didn't even notice that you lost this area of vision this is serious and you should see a retina specialist today and she said i'm sure they will take you with the description i'm going to give of of what i'm seeing in this exam and she was right, I was taken that day, saw the retina specialist, he looked at my right eye and said this is detached and it's been detached for a while, this didn't just happen. Uh, and we should really operate on this, this will only get worse. And he looked at my left eye and he said, and your left eye has latticing, your left eye latticing, I think it means that the retina is very thin and weak and he said really I want to do laser surgery on your left eye tomorrow to weld weld it down in place the, the retina down in place and also do a sclerobuckle on your right eye plus possibly a vitrectomy but I don't think I'll need to do that but possibly a vitrectomy uh, and he explained what that would be and um, I have another video on that and so I don't want to go into too much detail there and I will link that video um, and then I did have that that surgery it ended up he needed to do the vitrectomy and I had this long period of 10 weeks with a gas bubble in my eye uh, obstructing my vision doing its job to hold my retina in place but really obstructing my vision and uh, wreaking havoc on my lens uh, and advancing a cataract uh, very far along. So uh, at the three month period, he looked at my eye. I, even though at this point it was all filled with liquid again and I could now look through the liquid, my eye vision was much worse uh, in every way, straight ahead. Uh, uh, no matter how, what area I looked at, my vision was blurry. Um, so much worse than the day before I have the surgery where all I'm missing is this upper corner here, which is also kind of covered by my left eye and my mind isn't even noticing that I'm not seeing that. And now everything in my right side, no matter where I look, is blurry. So. <clears throat> So he said, you will have more healing to do with the retina and um, 
you also have a cataract. So you can choose to wait to get the cataract taken care of and see how far the retina comes along, or you can get the cataract taken care of now. It's really up to you. And I kept trying to ask him questions about, you know, what should I do? What's the best thing to do? Um, and I didn't get satisfying answers. And finally, my last question where I did get a satisfying answer was, well, if this was you, what would you do? And he said, well, you know, you have problems from a cataract and you have that has been caused by this vitrectomy, and you have problems from the vitrectomy, but he said you can get rid of the, the, the cataract. I'd just get rid of the cataract if it was me. Like, this should be obvious to me. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not in this profession. I don't know if the strain of having the cataract surgery this early, but waiting another six months is so much healthier for the eye. I'm, I don't know these things. That's why I'm asking you. That's why I'm here. Oh, um, but at least I got, okay, that's, that's helpful. So he's saying at this point he would go for the cataract surgery because that takes out, okay, everything related to the cataract to the lens problem is gone and now we're just dealing with what's the vitrectomy problem. So that surgery happened six weeks after that appointment, so four and a half weeks ago, just two days ago now. And I had great and wonderful hopes for this surgery. I knew that before the vitrectomy, before the whole surgery, before the cataract was advanced by the vitrectomy, I knew that the only place I was missing vision was up here. And even if I didn't get that back, if I could see clearly out the center and these other areas, that wouldn't be so bad. And getting this little bit up here would just be extra gravy. Um, and after the cataract surgery was done and after waiting till the next day when the uh, no longer the dilation fluid effect would no longer be in my eye that I could that my eye would close and I could focus better um, I was so incredibly disappointed with the quality of my vision and so right now I am looking at the screen without glasses and I have my my lens in this eye set for distance so it's over arm's reach away so this is just barely distance um, and this lens this is my regular left eye which is very nearsighted and we're about equally clear either way <laughs> uh, looking out far away in bright light this eye is a little bit better than the left eye but not a ton better not as good as it was before the, my vitrectomy surgery. And um, what is worse is even with readers, I cannot read. The letters seem to be on top of each other, overtyping themselves and the letters next to them. They seem to be stretched and elongated. Um, if I turn my head like this, I can see parts of the letter shift around. Uh, it's, it's so frustrating. I was in the doctor's office and they had a big L on the screen. And the L had like a, a cross on it like a T, at a slight slant, but like a, an L with like a cross on it to be like a TL. And if I turn my head like this, as I turn my head, that cross would drop till eventually it was parallel with the bottom foot of the L and it looked like an upside down T. And I said to the doctor, here's what happens when I turn my head like this. Um, you know, this, this line which is being imposed up here comes dropping down. And I said, is that an issue with the lens, something about the lens reflecting in my eye. And he said, no, it has nothing to do with the lens. Your, your replacement lens is not causing that. Um, that is a factor of having the vitrectomy surgery. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and I believe that is 
very possible and likely to me also that seems like it could be a lens problem um, and and now I'm to a point where I need to, to see the my regular optometrist and the sur the retina surgeon again and I'll verify these things again at that appointment but the bottom line is I don't have great vision in my right eye right now and it's already corrected with the lens um, so there is a little bit of swelling that will go down with the cataract surgery but that we're not talking about a great improvement because of the cataract surgery. I've got that improvement now. And I can tell my distance is not perfect, but it is much better than it was after the gas bubble was gone from my eye after the vitrectomy, but before the cataract surgery. So that distance is greatly improved with the cataract surgery. I can also say that there are many more shades of blue that I see with this eye, my right eye, than my left eye. But, um, you know, if I could click my heels and go back to June, to January 30th and, and have some method to freeze my retinal loss at that point, if, if that even exists, because I think they really had to do the a surgery at that point. I don't know that they could have just tacked down the retina at that point. Um, but if I could do that magically, that would be a better place for me. That would give me clearer vision in my right eye than what I've got now. <clears throat> so my concern for myself now is I was scheduled to have my left eye done for the cataract surgery and there are things that I would like about that in theory but now in practice I wanted to get this right eye done and see that I could read with the readers with the right eye and see how that worked and now that I have this right eye done and I have these results with letters of, of characters being imposed on top of themselves and not being able to read and putting on 2.5 magnifiers and 3.5 magnifier 3.25 magnifying lenses and still struggling and struggling to read something that's very large font I can't imagine how I will do my job looking at a computer screen and debugging programs or doing anything complicated um, when I'm just struggling to read a single sentence with my right eye and I am concerned that if that if I have to struggle with my left eye to read up close, um, I'm not going to be able to do my job. I'm not going to be able to function. I'm not going to be able to use my cell phone. I'm not going to be able to use my laptop for my personal life. <sighs> I can't. I know there's risks, and I'm trying to equate. I, I was hoping to know the difference in the diff in the in the quality of life when you've got to use readers all the time and I don't know that now <laughs> I still a big I don't know what that means because uh, I don't I didn't get that from my right eye and I'm just not getting comfortable data uh, from my doctors to know what is a really good course so I'm I was really so disappointed. I can't tell you how disappointed I was with the quality of my vision and so disappointed, so disappointed. Um, and I know things could be worse. There's people that are totally blind. Uh, I know things could be worse, but now I'm just wondering what is the prudent decision for me. You know, I'm not afraid to go under the knife. I've obviously had one eye done and, and the actual surgery is not bad, but it is my concern with understanding the results and making a good choice that is going to let me live, um, that's going to let me do my job. Um, and it's a concern for me now. Uh, many people have said I was very brave to go through what I've gone through. And at each step of this, it's like I don't have any other choice. 
this is what the hardest thing for me is. Should I get the second cataract surgery done? Because I'm kind of lopsided now in my view. Um, but I can function like this. And I don't know that the doctors have understood, really understood where I'm coming from. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that that I have found the magical way to pose my questions that don't seem like I'm challenging them, that they don't think that the answer should be obvious to me when it's, again, it's not. I think I have a suspicion that when you're in a career where you deal with something every day, answers become obvious to you. And therefore you think they're obvious to everyone, but they're not. And so I want to make sure they understand my, my problem, my concern, and, and still feel that a certain course is the best course and explain why. And that just seems difficult. I'm going to have an appointment with my regular optometrist again in five days. And uh, I'm just hoping to become so enlightened by that point.